Hello again, and welcome to another Inktober Tangles tutorial. This is Barbara Langston, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and I am doing Day 18, which is Be Twined by Peggy Shargell. And I'm pretty sure she's also a Certified Zentangle Teacher. And I printed this out as a way to show my email address in case you wanted to contact me. But this is also part of the way that I did my Inktober Tangles for 2019. I put it on an Opus tile, which is the biggest tile that Zentangle makes. And I had a lot of fun getting it to fit, and this is just a small section of it. But there again, my email address is notperfectzen at gmail.com. And the pattern for today, like I said, is Be Twined by Peggy Shargell. And it is a grid. So I'm going to start with my corner dots. And I'm going to try my best to make an evenly divided grid. So let's go ahead and break this in half. Do this in half again. And no, I don't get them the same size, but it's okay. I rarely get them the same size when I freehand the grid. Okay, so probably should have done that with ink to begin with. But let's go ahead and go over it. But I can take that opportunity, because I didn't do it in ink first, to bring this one down just a little bit. one's center and bring this one down just a little bit okay try not to make this last too long you don't need to just watch me build a grid but here we go And so that's not too confusing. Oops, sorry about that. Bumped my camera again. I'm going to erase that pencil work real quick. Okay. Good thing about this is you can fast forward if you want to. So we're going to begin by putting some diagonal lines in each one of these boxes. And when you're doing that with a handmade grid, don't just try to do a straight line across it because it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna work. Put one line at a time from corner to corner. And it helps if you kinda Make sure your pen is headed in the right direction before you start drawing. Try not to take too much time on this. And I'm just going to turn my tile a little bit easier to get to the ones on this side. Okay, so that is step one, draw your grid and then draw diagonal lines in only one direction. Now we're gonna go inside each one of these and we're gonna put like parentheses type brackets. 
like this on one side and like this on the other. Okay. And I'm going to do this kind of quick. I'm going to go down each side this way. I do believe that Peggy said she does hers that way, that she comes at all of them from the right because she's right handed. Just a very simple curve, sort of like a parenthesis. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm trying to make a match somewhat. I hope you're having fun practicing these patterns. I have definitely gotten a chance to practice some patterns that I've never tried before and work on making some of them that I already know, learn how to make them a little bit different. Okay. So there we have our grid. And now in hollowball fashion, going under, we are going to do the same thing in this direction. So I need my diagonal line. Go down. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put those little parentheses marks while I'm here. It's going to go under, and it's going to meet up with those lines that we already had there before. See that? And then over here, go ahead and do our line and put it under. So we're gonna to continue to do that. I'm gonna start where that one ends, make a little mark, curve it, and have it meet up. We're going to do the same thing on this side, curve, and now it's going to meet with that one. Okay, so let's just continue. Starting here, go under, meet that curve. Start here, curve. With this grid, you can do several different things with either the pattern that we're drawing, with the lines that are going across, or with what's underneath. Okay, so I'm going to meet here. Uh, you can also, if you look at it like this, make this into a border pattern. I have not tried that yet. I've been focusing on doing the bigger pattern. If it's easier for you, you could go ahead and put your lines all the way across to these corners and then go back and make your curves.
Once you figure out what it's doing, it's pretty easy to get it done. I think I liked that, having my lines already there. Goes a little bit more quickly. Not that I'm in a hurry, but I don't want you to have to watch me all day. And this one, always meeting where the other one ended. Nice quiet day so far, no lawnmowers. Of course, it's getting to be fall here in South Texas. I'm close to the Gulf Coast and it won't be long before we're not mowing the lawn. Okay, so there. That is the basic pattern of Etwined. And there are several things that you can do with this. Um, I played with it a little bit. I'm not going to draw a whole new card for each one of these ideas. I'm just going to show you on here some of the things that you can do. One is I'm going to get my um, my graphic one because it's a lot faster for filling things in. And you could come and fill in these spaces. And I'm not going to get necessarily too close to the edge and come back with my one and fill that in. Okay. Definitely easier to fill these in with a little bit of a broad tipped pen. This is the same ink as the O1. It is an archival ink, so it's waterproof. But when you've done a lot of inking like this, be aware that it's not going to dry very fast. Don't rub your hand across it or it will smear your tile. And like I said, I'm not going to fill them all in, but it does um, add a lot of drama to this. If you were to do it, you could also do this on a black tile. I have seen it done that way, and they filled in the whole pattern using a Jelly Roll. Okay, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to, and this one over here, I'm going to show you a different way that you can do it. You can put lines, it's not doing so well. Okay, here we go. I'm going to keep these kind of close and then. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in one corner on each side. So I'm going in the same way that um, this middle line was. And then I'm just going to fill in the corners. Okay, I'm going to turn it. And do the same thing 
And each one of these little squares, well, it's not actually a square, kind of a diamond shape. And one more real quick. So there's one idea for filling those in. Of course, I would be filling in all of them, but I'm just showing you in these little squares. Um, one thing you could do around these that I've seen is, this is kind of darken right here in the center to give this little intersection some drama and then Right in here, let's add a little orb and let's keep the center of it open. Okay. Okay, there's an idea for that. You could, in the very center of each of these, just add a big orb. Similar to what we did there. And then you could come back with your jelly roll. And add some white right there in the center. You could add white in the center of those also. I'm using, uh, this is actually a cream colored tile that I cut. It's a four by four. Let's look at a little bit of shading. For these, could just come to the centers. I'm going to go around this one a little bit. Being mindful that that jelly roll is probably not dry. I'm going to try to not smear it. This one, just going to send that out a little bit, soften it. And then, of course, wherever these go under another one, you would want to add some shading. Similar to what we do when we're shading Hollaball. Oh, let's see, still trying to decide how I want to shade that one. Let's go ahead and just soften these.
Okay, so that and that section is just some basic shading. You could, I'm going to come down here in this section, just shade the bottom sides of these. So I'm going to come below this one. You could just shade the whole inside of just one. And this is going to be kind of like a sampler's quilt. Lots of different ways. And then let's just go ahead and do that one like I did the one above it. I like how that looks. Okay. One thing that you could do is just, let's just shade inside of these, leaving the center white, or in this case, a little bit cream color. side, leave that center area open, okay, so there's four different ways that you could leave it, of course I would still put my shading here, my shading on the outside where these are going under. I have seen where somebody put the little hatch lines on these, um, but after I did it, I wasn't real pleased with how it turned out. Okay, so. I'm going to show you real quick another way that you can do this. And I'm just going to do a quick square. And again, I'm not getting them perfectly divided, but that's okay. So now I'm going to do my initial diagonal lines this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now on these, I had those like parentheses. But you can also do this with just a straight line. Don't go across that little corner. So bring this down straight. This one. I'm flip it. Because I do find it easier if my pen is pointing towards the line that I'm trying to aura. And do a little bit better at keeping my aura at a good 
distance. Okay, so all I've done is that same step, but I did it with straight lines. Now I'm going to turn and I'm going to do my straight line across and going under. Now I'm going to do my next line. So this line is going to meet up with that one. This one's going to start where that one ended. And come back down. So in here, I'm going to do my diagonal, bring this one down, and then it needs to meet that one. That ended up being kind of a curve. That's because I didn't keep my box straight. Here. Start where it meets that one. And come down. And then side. And I missed one over here. So, oh, and I missed one here. So, there it is. That's the same betwined pattern, but I've put straight lines instead of the parentheses. And when I was playing this, playing with this last night, I thought, well, that looks like the beginnings of Cubine. So we're going to fill this in. So I like that pattern. <laughs> I like how that comes out. And I would do the same shading here and here. Where it goes under. And then for cubine, one of these would be shaded, and I'm going to shade the same side on each of these. And then I'm going to soften all this with the tortillon. I think this would look pretty cool on a bigger grid. There we go. So that is betwined with a little bit of cubine inside. So there we go. We have several examples here. And then different tangulation of it there. And hope you have fun with it. And again, this is how you contact me, notperfectzen at gmail.com. If you have any questions or you want to see the list of the classes that I have already done that don't show up because they were paid classes. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Bye.